What's up guys, I'm Stanov and today I'm going to solve the second day of advent of code by following test-driven development. Alright, let's get right into it. The first assignment is for each row in the input file find the smallest and largest value and compute their difference and as a result provide sum of all the differences for every row row maybe so let's do it copy paste template it's going to be day 202 and run tests and there is one more okay everything is great there is one more thing there is somewhere here is days template uh, instead of template is going to be day 202 so now it should work yes come in and push day 202 create it from template come in and push here we go now let's copy the input this is the whole input let's paste it here so it's separated by tabs It's good to know. Now I can put the cases here. So if I get five one nine five. Should I? The question is, should I split it to those three cases? I guess I should. Oh, I have something in my eye. Okay, sorry. So I'm going to, or I can I can split it to four different ones and what I decided to do last time to switch those to put the um, the the acceptance test down here row one and it should be eight and there are three lines they are separated by tabs so no space here but tab or maybe I can I can make it work for everything and it's still as their spaces so I'm going to make regex which handles just generic white space it should be four and it should be six four this should be six and if I do everything So I have the full example copied here and I haven't modified those numbers. Yeah, 
846 and should be 18. 18, here we go. So those are the tests for for the first part. Run tests. These are just skipped. One is skipped, all of them should be skipped. What's happening here? Solver test, all of them should be skipped. Ah, they are... It didn't tell me a single thing. I have four tests with the same number what the hell idea or pie charm you should have told me this but i have just and for example why did you do that So now four tests skipped, everything passed. Commit and push. And it input and tests from the web page. Web page. It's not a word. Okay, whatever. Commit and push. So, and I should also open the continuous integration and see if it, yes, it's all green. All, oh, nope. Now it's going to be all green, I hope. So, we can make the first test. That is empty string zero. Okay, all green, all green guys, four skipped. That's cool. So empty string should return zero and Return zero. So I can. Yeah, let's skip skip the first first part here and run only those tests. So that's it. And one one should be test test one empty input. Returns zero sum. There we go. Now, yeah, and commit and push, maybe first test. So that's it. Now I can do input with one number and it should give me the number. One number returns the Num number run the test and it fails why it fails because those are swapped as we know from the last episode uh, expected is one and it returns zero why does it return zero because 
here is return zero. So I've got to say if input string can I say is not empty nope can I use the hint here I don't know how to how to use those okay whatever if length input string is zero then return zero else return one there we go return one if not empty so now I can add another test that says return the number two and it's going to be for example five Because that's it. Summed 5 is 5. Run the test and it fails. Why? Because it expects 5 but returns 1. So I don't return 1 but I return the input string converted to int. Yay! All green. return number in input commit and push so what's next next can be multiple numbers, uh, multiple rows. So, multiple rows return mm -hmm. sum. So, five and three should return eight let's see and it fails why because five new line three cannot be converted to integer so i can Split the input string to lines and there is some f oh, 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 that's it. Those are problems facade test. Instantiating of a calculator by day number. Yeah, it, it fails here. Yeah, it, it just tries to
it tries to instantiate it and it cannot because because it it fails in the calculate part one I guess but why no. What happened there? Sure, I should comment this one and now it works nope but why is it even called? Test instantiating of calculator. Ah, it calls it. Okay, but still it's not. The input string. It's not here, is it? What's happening here? Test calculate part one. Ah, it tries to call it on the on the input string on the input string uh, that is read from the from the file that's it so I broke this before every commit I should run the whole suite of tests that I didn't and it is not responsible behavior people so remember that so I need to okay I will I will implement this and it would solve it so it should be okay python split string by lines split lines okay So for line in split lines there is going to it's not hmm For line one, no, it should work like this line one, line two equals to this, and then I should return. In line one plus int line 2 because there are only two lines so this should help this will not solve the problem with the uh... yeah this doesn't work this doesn't work either 
Yeah, but multi multiple rows now work, but not. So is it is it the easiest case? I should do. I can put there another if. I can do split lines. Lines is this. If lines dot uh, length lines is equal to zero, then return zero. So I can remove this. If length lines is one, then return int uh, lines zero else. equal to lines and return line one plus one two okay this should work and it should be the easiest code yes so what should I do now this this test is okay but the test for the facade is failing. So I can put here this. If it's two, then this else return zero. This should work for every case. There we go. So it's was here. Yeah, this one. Mm. Multiple lines. Commit and push. So Now we can do ten, twelve, twenty is thirty two, right? And now it tells me this. I don't know. Actually, I should comment this because it's time hasn't come yet. This should work. Oh, I didn't want to run this. Need to run this. This should work. Yes. And I want to refactor it. Or should I refactor it and then add another test? Because now I would add a variable and as an accumulator and then add 
the numbers to the accumulator and I don't it will be changing the production code I don't want to do that because I'm not allowed to by the rules of TDD so now I have this test that fails so I'm going to do something like result is zero I'm going to return result in the end and I'm going to go for line in lines result plus in line right nope 42 my math sucks yep 42 <laughs> and that is the test driven development because I don't know if I if I have written the test correctly until I see it pass or don't. So this is it and it should work. Yes. And it will not work for the main example. Hmm. So what now? I can... I can put it here. Something like... If length lines is... is bigger than 10 then return 0 and to do remove when parsing is done correctly right yeah it's not best but let's see Coming multiple lines, commit and push. So what now? Now I should work on the on the values on each line.
I'm thinking about if I should split it into two different components. One component would parse the line or calculate the value for, for each line and the other component would sum those values. The rule of thumb should be do it the simplest way possible. And simplest way possible should be just put it here and see what happens. Or I may just create new helper class. I don't know if, if it's the right way, but I'm going to do it. So I'm going to create uh, how to say it line calculator. So, line calculator calculator A line calculator would do or I should Maybe I should just start to write a test here. I'm not sure if it's the right way. I don't know. I want to... Uh, nope. Helper... Later. But I would like to call it with with an argument. Is it possible? Ah, uh, so I should parameterize the test. Oh my god. That's too hard. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to use the fixture here. So 
calculator is there's going to be one and I want to no uh, no 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 Well, yeah, actually, it should be it should be just without just like this, and I want to call calculator dot cal late line there's going to be one return one and now I'm going to run this and that's it there is no calculate line so I'm going to create calculate line there's going to be no no params and it's going to return return one might be static that's right and it works I'm not sure what's the good approach in this when I want to create new component so should I just Created like like this. Line calculator line. No, I'm uh, self dot line calculator calculator dot calculate line. So this should be it, but it doesn't. So I'm not going to comment this, maybe. Yeah, this stuff. But still, there will be like those. Hmm, it should be, it should be, it should be decoupled more, I guess.
I'm not discussing the solution, I'm discussing the design of the solution here. I'm not sure if I get it correctly. Because now the solver depends on the calculate line. Now calculate line can return int line, right? Right. So maybe it's not that bad at all. And that should be it. That should be it. Because I'm that should be it should be done for solver and for solver test. Because now it works for those values I have in solver. So solver and solver test are now done. And now I am Mm. I'm focusing on this line calculator. And I've got to say I love mm, over engineering in my free time because I don't have time for that at work. So I enjoy it in my free time. So in case someone is really watching this, I congratulate you to watch me doing some over engineering and for my possible future employers watching this I'm not doing this at work much okay moving on uh, summing multiple lines and um, it would be created line calculator Come in and push. So calculator test calculate one number. Now I can calculate two same numbers. So there's going to be one and one. Yeah, but it should, it should, hmm, so there is no, no one number, there will never be one number in there. So I will delete the test from the solver afterwards, Because this will never happen, this will never happen, this will never happen. None of those will ever happen. So line calculator, one and one should return zero. And that's it, that's the, mm, that's the process of test driven development just just mm, figuring out what the assignment is so it's one and one should return zero because it's zero one minus one
return zero. I should probably mock mock the line calculator here or here to compute it. Okay, whatever. So that's the base base case. Base case is two same numbers. So now I can do, for example, 5 minus 2 should return 3, 2 different numbers. And it should be line that's split maybe split by space it's numbers and it's return number one number two return number one minus number to convert it to int now it should work yes commit and push okay run all the tests no why Four 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 fuck six 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 six. Yeah, is the uh, I don't like you solver test. It's forty two guys, it's forty two. I unintentionally used forty two as a result. So should I delete those tests? because they are not testing anything I'm going to I don't know I don't know what what should I do here I should do I should refactor Should refactor this. To some summer. 
component that takes the line calculator as a parameter and that would be sick but it would be properly decoupled and properly unit tested so there's a question that's the design question And how to mock it afterwards? I'm not sure, guys. I'm not sure. Not sure. So I'm going to leave it, leave it here, and I'm going to delete those tests. But I'm not. I'm not really sure because those tests are not relevant anymore. That's a tough situation. What would Uncle Bob do? I have no idea. That's it. Those tests just... That's not nice, guys. It's not nice. But I have no idea what to do. Okay. Here we go. So, line calculator Maybe I will remove those tests first. the work and then for two numbers So I can do three numbers. Five, two, and no, two different numbers descending. That's it. And 
ascending. So I can do one and eight, and it should be seven. Now, line calculator, it should fail. No, this time. Yes, it fails. So I will do apps here. And it's green. So run everything. Perfect. So now I can do more tip different numbers. So it will be one and eight and four and twelve two and it's gonna be so this is eleven, right? It's twelve minus one. So I can run those tests and it fails because there are can be split for unpacking. So now I have this numbers. And I have highest that would be none at the beginning and lowest that would be none at the beginning. And I want to do for each number in numbers. If highest is non or number is bigger than highest, then highest is number. And if lowest is none or number is lesser than lowest, then lowest is number. And then return absolute value of, yeah, a number is. Can I do it somehow? To map map lambda x
is int x and numbers that way nope how is it Col with colon yes i suppose return highest minus lowest and it works so that would be the line calculator maybe I can put this here and then this here and for number uh, number in numbers or maybe Python list notation Slice notation. No, 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 no. I want. Mm. List for in. Map list. Don't see it. And maybe I don't have to do the lambda here. I can say just int. Apply int to everything here. Oh, yes. Run test. Oh, yes. So calculate line should now work. And that's going to be it, right? I'm not going to use any test with exception. Or should I? No. So it's line calculator done. I wanted to refactor this even further to create something like builder that you would call add the number to consider and then create an object that says um, gi give me the lowest one and give me the highest one should I do it let's see what the second part would be so tests run smoothly now i can do solver test and unmark those now run them and it works so i guess i can run my gui application run 202 and it's a zero ah i know why because of these 
solver this. Now I can put this in line. And that's it, right? Two o two and calculate, and nope. Why? Because there are tops, so I should use it. Mm, regex white space white space is so what's white space big s Small s. Guys, white space character tab carriage return. Yay. S. Small s, maybe. Double this. No. Python string split by white space. With our arguments, pizza on white space. Seriously, seriously. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so without argument. Yay. And now. We should run main two o two, and it's something like this. Let's see. Give it to me. Woo! Here we go. So main main test part one is this run test. And it works. So part one is done. So let's see what's the part two. On the right track is a star. Okay, why is it really divisible values in so sounds like an example? First row, the only two numbers that are evenly divided are eight and two. The result what?
So only the nine and three. That should be easy, right? <clears throat> so solver test, full example for this. is four three of them and one one two three and four the second row says it's three third row it's two and the last one should be all of them and should be nine so for example one for example, two, for example, three, for example, four. Okay, so these are tests for second part. And here I can create another method called accept number self and number that returns true if not accept self tetchka accept number <laughs> I'm sorry I want to say dot but I said tetchka it's in check for dot number then continue and should still pass everything yes this is just refactoring right Mm 
now I can say def solve it takes input string input string and line calculator and it does this Return that solve input string and new line calculator this will not be here and for the second part okay whatever for second part I want to return Solve input string but line calculator only events. calculator only events would be class line calculator only events which inherits from line calculator and it defines accept number return number modulo 2 is 0 right So here okay yeah am I going to write any more tests for that? I should write but I have to go to work tomorrow. Sorry guys, this is not the responsible approach. Yeah, and here it should be so 4822. Those are the even numbers.
So now I can run main 202 calculate and this. Drum roll. Oh, the answer is too high. Huh. When one evenly divides the other, oh boy. But why the there are those may those tests ah they are skipped that's right so it's not that easy yes Result of this division is four. So I do need to write the line calculator. That sucks, man. So it's not going to be line, calcul line calculator. Min max. Whatever. Excel number doesn't need to be there. Oh, 
line calculator max is going to be line calculator division line calculator division test What do you want from me? Uh. So, line calculator division. Whatever, return zero. Can I do a block comment? Yes, something like that. So that's it. So this should be okay. Solver test should be okay somehow for now. Okay. I need to allocate more time for this next time. So calculate line. Four and two should return to or eight and two should return four. That means should I do it? I don't have time for this. I'm so sorry people. So I have those numbers. Uh, 
numbers to read. Numbers read are nothing. For number in numbers to read, if no, 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 for number in numbers to read. Do for number new number old already read in numbers read. If number new modulo number already read is equal to zero, or the opposite way around. to be two ifs. If number new return division or if this applies return divided this way else numbers red dead push add append okay append number new and do it again And if it finishes this, rise exception no matching number found, this should never happen. Yeah, I just coded it. Sorry, people. Multiple divisible numbers, so there is going to be three and five and 13 and then they're going to be for example for example 2 and 70 I can do it like this 11 and 23 is a prime I guess 17 and 19 and 10 and 31 for example should be 5 and it's not why And that's it. 
now here comes the debugging because I didn't I haven't tested it and I need to live through this so I will know that the test driven development way is the better one because then I feel productive in something maybe even if it's a bit slower sometimes there's going to be some copy paste number new number already read number already read number already new number new return yeah it should be here right That's it, people. That's it, people. That's it, people. That's it, people. And success. <sighs> so main test part two is three oh three run test. That's it, people. That's it. Part two done. Yay. Come and push. So return to advent calendar and there are two of them. Once again. Yay. Once again. Yay. Once again. Yay. <laughs> okay, so that's it, people. all works so there was this joke saying having sex is cool but did you ever closed 15 tabs after finishing a project oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes people any to do left Nope, only in the template. So, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a comment down below on YouTube. And see you maybe next time at the third episode of Advent of TDD. Have a nice time, guys. See you.